Hi you folks, and uh, Zerat here once again, as you see by the little name right there. And instead of, you know, me talking about what we're about to play, I'm just going to start the new game with the name Let's Play. So here we go. So, they found it again, have they? I thought we'd taken care of it. The uh, forces of evil are persistent, sir. I'm getting too old for this. Who have we got lined up to deal with this problem? Uh, Murphy, sir. Oh, no, not Murphy. I'm afraid so, sir. What about Spade or Marlowe? Uh, Dad, sir. Isn't there anyone else? Sorry, sir, he's next on the list. Well, I suppose we'll have to make do. Knowing Murphy, he's going to need help. A lot of help. I'll check the archives and get back to you, sir. News of the day. As the Second World War enters its final days, Allied forces are on the march. The troops of the Western Alliance are occupied with the dangerous duty of ferreting out the remaining pockets of Nazi resistance. The storming of Berlin has crushed the heart of German opposition and sent remnants of the Fuhrer's troops scurrying into the dark reaches of the Black Forest. The Germans have vowed to fight to the last man in their quest for world domination. But their days are numbered, with Adolf Hitler dead and the once dreaded SS disbanded. The Allies have exposed the workings of the Nazi war machine and found it festering with ancient blood cults whose rituals and ceremonies are too astonishing and barbaric to detail. Allied forces will not rest until the last cult member has been revealed and captured. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal, the redness and horror of blood. In the moonlight, New San Francisco sparkles like a chunk of cubic zirconium, an island of hollow beauty surrounded by a red sea of radiation. Five million souls drowning in gamma rays. Some lucky people have a natural immunity to genetic mutation caused by the radiation. I'm one of them. Most of them live in the new city, but I don't. I live among the unlucky souls, the mutants and the destitute and the wreckage of old San Francisco. My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a private detective. Or at least I used to be. Since my marriage hit the rocks, I haven't done much of anything. I went out tonight for the first time in a week, but all I ended up doing was spending the last of my money on a bottle of cheap bourbon. Now it's past midnight, and I'm staring out of the window of my office on the second floor of the Ritz Hotel. Just like me, the Ritz used to be something. 
Now it's just another grimy building in a rundown part of town. And I'm almost out of bourbon. My God, Murphy, you look like hell. Really hit bottom, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I usually don't look this bad. I forgot to take my Geritol this morning. So, you want a drink? I saved my first one to have with you. No, thanks. I've been dry for eight years now. Yep, one morning I just looked in the mirror and decided that I needed to make a few lifestyle changes. Quit smoking, quit drinking. Now I'm getting out of the business. Yep, I'm gonna move to the tropics and retire in a nice secluded island with a tribe of beautiful young women. You're getting out of the business? I guess that means the end of the world must be around the corner because you are the detective. I can't imagine you doing anything else, especially not running around an island with a bunch of nubile women in a loincloth. No, I can imagine it. I've been thinking about it for years now. You know how it is. Lonely. Underappreciated. Dangerous. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in 38 years. I tell you, I'm working on a case right now, and that's gonna be my last one. Oh. Enough about me. How about you, Tex? How's life treating you? Bad as it looks? <laughs> well, it depends. What day is it anyway today? Saturday? Well, Saturdays aren't too bad. It's normally Thursday by the time I get really suicidal. So what is it you wanted? Just come by to sprinkle a little salt into the uh, open wounds of my pathetic life? No, 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 Tex, you got me all wrong. <laughs> nah, just because you turned me in and got me suspended and humiliated me in front of my peers, you sold me out. <laughs> but that's all in the past. See, I quit hating you for that weeks ago. Ah, like I said, I'll be leaving soon and I didn't want to go with any loose ends dangling there to bother me in my golden years. <sighs> hey, don't worry about me. When you tossed me out of the agency, it was the best thing that ever happened. Digging through dumpsters and sleeping in abandoned speeders. You helped me learn a great lesson. Because no matter how bad things are, they can always get worse. So what happened to you? I heard you were doing pretty well there for a while. Did I help a job on that Martian memorandum case? What's your problem? You one of those people can't live with success? Huh? Well, I can live with it. I'm just afraid of commitment. Now you tell me something. Why wouldn't you talk to me 15 years ago? I was a stupid kid back then. Could have tried to understand why I told the ethics board what I did. I mean, I understand now that I was out of line and I made a mistake, but why'd you cut me off like that? Because apparently you never learned the first rule of a P.I. And never, ever, betray your friends. Now, friendship goes beyond blood and race and politics. You gotta find out who your friends are, then you hold on to them. They're a precious commodity to people like me and you. Now listen, before I go, I came here with a warning. I heard your name mentioned in connection with a case that I'm working on, and you stay out of it. If you don't, somebody's gonna find you floating in the bay with a hole in your head. I don't need any more strain on my conscience. You know, frankly, I'm pretty insulted. Because I'm a pretty damn good detective. And I can take care of myself, thank you. No! Let's remember what I said, Tex. Got no idea what kind of people we're dealing with here. Just keep out of my way. I'll send you a postcard. <laughs> So 
last night, after 15 years, the colonel walks into my office. Made me take a good hard look at myself. Maybe I have hit bottom, and maybe I do look like hell. Lord knows the only exercise I've had lately is tipping the bottle and flipping cards into my hat. I gotta find some work. Contrary to what the colonel might think, I'm as good a detective as he ever was. Now I just gotta prove it. I'm gonna scare up a job today, even if it means finding somebody's lost puppy. And thus... Well, begins... Tex Murphy 3, Under a Killing Moon. If you haven't figured that out already. So, let's see, when last we left Tex, he was speeding off in the distance with millionaire heiress Alexis Al Alexis Alexis Alexander. And that was apparently three years ago. At least according to the timelines I've seen. So this game puts us in night in a twenty forty two about, if you go by the in-game uh, memos and all that, about nine years after his first case, the Mean Streets case. But something else happened six years ago. We get to learn a little bit of backstory on Tex. Apparently he was friends with this colonel person and turned him into the Ethics Review Board for some reason and got him suspended from the force. We don't know what happened yet, but I'm pretty much willing to bet that we will before the end of this game. Now, a few things before I call this video, and uh, next time we will actually begin doing some earnest investigation. Let's get familiar with the controls. I will explain more about some of these panels when they come up here. Here are conversation panels. You have an auxiliary panel, which is, you know, your option screen. And you see the options here, load, save, intro, exit, etc. Uh, all this will pop up when you actually start to grab inventory items. And here you can get hints, text, and travel. Hint, just, you know, see, getting started in Texas office. And you lose a point for that. See, that's the thing. I mean, if I really wanted to. See, you, you lose points. So what I'm, I'm going to restart. I'm going to restart, uh, reload our game. But right now, I'm just explaining everything. You can get hints in game if you really want to. Text and no text. You'll get just speech. Travel? But do we have anywhere to go? No. Only place we have is Texas office. We cannot travel to other areas. So there we go. We are in invest interactive mode right now, which means that this screen we can move around and you see this little This one really isn't art, it's a placemat from Taco Bob's. Okay. Notice how it says spacebar to walk around. You hit spacebar, you move the mouse around left and right turns, forward and back, moves you forward and back, and the arrow keys, the up and down arrow on the keyboard, move you, uh, move your viewpoint. And spacebar moves you back into here. And when I hit the next video, we will actually do some exploring and a little bit more in-depth, um, uh, explanation of why you'd want to tilt your head up and down and all that so yeah, I thought this was a good point I thought this was a good you know uh, point to get to you know just see the intro here that yeah things have changed every line of dialogue in this game is going to be voiced by the game and not me some of you are probably you know sighing with relief right now at that. But anyway, before I stumble over more words and have more awkward pauses, I'm going to end the video here, 
And when I come back, we will begin, as I've said, by exploring through Tex's office. So, until then, folks, uh, take care, people. I'll see you next time for the official start of Let's Play Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon.